the Lord is leading us, we're going to be a little different today. You see me sitting here and not standing. I'm going to do my best, amen, to calmly uh, give you the discourse of the Word of God. But I want to tell you today that I believe the Lord certainly has a word for us today. Somebody say amen. If you would, just for a few moments, turn your attention uh, to Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 24, reading verses 37 through 39. Matthew 24, verses 37 through 39. It says, But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that there were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, if you would, you know how we do in church. We put our finger in that marker and we flip over to the next scripture. So if you would, if you have your Bibles, flip over to Genesis chapter number 6, looking at verse number 3, and then landing at verse number 8. Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. Here it is. This is what I want today. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I, and I would challenge everybody that's watching today to put your name where Noah's name is. And hopefully you can say this morning, but Reggie found grace in the eyes of the Lord. That's what I want to talk to us about for these next few moments. Have you found grace? The Bible declares to us, brothers and sisters, if we were to look over at Titus uh, chapter number 2, verse number 11, it declares that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. And we understand that the appearance of the grace of God is seen by humanity in the face of Jesus Christ. This grace, the Bible tells us, teaches us that denying ungodly lust, that we are to live righteously and soberly in this present and evil world. So when we read the scriptures there in Titus chapter number 2, verse number 11, there is no question that the grace of God has appeared unto humanity. The question this morning that God would have me to ask you as he is asking all of us is, have we found grace? Amen. I submit to us today, brothers and sisters, that and we, if we have truly found grace, then grace should teach us that we have to deny worldliness. If we have found grace, we must understand that grace teaches us right living, amen, right behavior. Grace teaches us that we are to live soberly and not to be drunken on the successes, amen, and our personal ambitions that we have obtained in this life, amen. But we are to keep a focus, an eternal focus, and a focus on heaven. Would somebody shout amen? Let me, let me stop here for a moment and let me emphatically declare to you that I am not uh, determining or I'm not trying to uh, project and to tell you that Jesus is coming or that I know when Jesus is coming. Uh, because the Bible has already declared to all of us that no man knows the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Uh, but I do want to suggest to all of us that are watching today and all of us that are being impacted by the pandemic of our world that I do believe and that I am convinced that the, the happenings of today are simply a harbinger of things that are to come. That word harbinger, amen, it speaks to us as being a sign or an, an announcement by a person or an event that is announcing something that is yet to come. And I, I submit to all of us today that as the Bible declares unto us that when we begin to see the things that are happening, the unrest, amen, and the things that are happening in our world, he says, these, this is not the end, for the end is not yet, but these are the beginnings of sorrow. And so I submit to us today, brothers and 
sisters, that while we may not know the day or the hour that Jesus is coming, it is without question in my mind today that Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Amen. And so it is, brothers and sisters, we must understand that, amen, as it was in Noah's day, the Bible declares that they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. In other words, amen, they were going along about life, amen, because they were prospering and life seemed to be good. But we have to be careful to understand, amen, that God does not see. I told you last week. God does not see the same way that we see. For amen, man simply looks based off of what he can see with his natural eye. But God is looking at the hearts of humanity. Man, and so we must understand that because God is looking at the hearts of humanity, it is now that we have entered into a time in which I believe God is calling for all men everywhere to repent. I knew, amen, I knew when God began to download this word into my spirit, amen, that it may not be a most popular word on social media today, but I declare unto everybody that is listening, it is a most relevant word for humanity. Amen, the Bible declares unto us, if we were to turn to Acts chapter number 3, verse number 19. I'm not preaching, y'all, I'm just talking really, really fast. I feel good in my soul. Amen. Acts chapter number 3, verse number 19 declares, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And so, brothers and sisters, we see that repentance is something that helps, amen, all of humanity to get in position for what God is getting ready to do next. Amen. I cannot declare to you today how long the pandemic will last. And I cannot declare to you today how long it is that we may not be able to gather into the sanctuary physically of the Lord. But I can tell you that if we will posture our hearts to repent before the Lord. Thank you, Lord. If we will posture our hearts to repent before the Lord. Amen. The Bible declares unto us that repentance helps to convert us or to change us. I don't know about you, but I'm convinced that I still need some changing. Yes, I'm going to be honest this morning. This is the preacher that is talking. Now, amen. I realize, amen, that I'm still not everything that God would desire me to be. I'm still on the wheel. I wish somebody would be honest this morning. I'm still on the wheel, but I understand that as we live a life of repentance, it will help us to be changed by God. Number two, not only will repentance help us to be changed by God, but repentance according to Acts 3 and 19. Amen. It enables our sins to be blotted out. Amen. And finally, when we began to consider, amen, the advantage of repentance, we see that repentance now puts us in position for the refreshing move of God. And I don't know about y'all this morning. I'm trying to move on, but I don't know about you this morning, but amen, I'm still hungry for a move of God. Hallelujah. I know we're not able to gather together in the sanctuary, amen, and many are longing to be in the house of God, but amen, I'm reminded of what the prophet Amos began to declare many a times in the scriptures uh, as he began to tell the people that it is time to seek the Lord, uh, amen, he did not say it's time to seek service, a time to come back to the church, uh, amen, but Amos declared to the people of God that were standing, amen. Amen. In the presence of potential judgment in the justice of God, uh, he declares that it is time for us to seek the Lord. Uh, and I got to be honest this morning, y'all, it was the spirit of the Lord, amen, that arrested me this morning as I got up. Uh, amen. It seems as if I could not rest this morning. I was tossing and I was turning. Uh, and early this morning, the spirit of the Lord woke me up and drew me into my prayer closet, uh, into my bonus room. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Uh, and as I began, amen, to kneel down, the presence of the Lord met me there, and God began to speak to my heart. Uh, he began to say to me that, son, it is time for us to repent. Uh, amen. From the pulpit to the door, from the pulpit to the parking lot, God is calling for repentance. Uh, man, and I'm reminded as God began to speak to the prophet Amos here for a moment. Uh, 
Uh, John, just let me deliver myself. I'm going to be done in just a few minutes. Uh, and then God, God began to speak to the prophet Amos. Uh, God had given Amos the responsibility uh, of dealing with the superficial rel religiosity of his day. Uh, amen. The Bible declares, amen, that God spoke to Amos and told Amos to tell the people, uh, amen, that judgment was at the door. I'm paraphrasing for a moment here. Uh, man, God declares that judgment was at the door. Uh, Cause, amen, of the sins of the people. Uh, can I suggest to everyone that is listening to me today, uh, amen, that God is not simply against America. Uh, amen. But the Bible declares that righteousness exalts a nation. Uh, and sin is a reproach to any people. Uh, it does not matter who we are. It does not matter our ethnicity. Uh, it does not matter our nationality when it comes to God. Uh, God is still calling for holiness. Uh, I feel my help, y'all. I'm trying to sit in this seat, but I want us to understand it now. Uh, that God is still calling for holiness. Uh, Thank you, Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord began to waken me and begin to shake me this morning. And God says, Son, I want you to understand something. He says that it is your job as a leader, not simply to tell the people, but to show the people. In other words, God says, yeah, you're preaching and yeah, y'all are telling the people that it's time to repent. But leave is about showing and telling. Huh? In other words, God said perhaps the people don't know amen how to repent huh? because you as a leader have not shown them. Huh? And it was the same in Amos' day the Bible declared huh? amen that the leadership amen had perverted themselves. The leadership huh? had gone away from the oracles of God and because leadership huh? had gone away from the oracles of God judgment of God was kindled against the people of God. Because uh, the people were following leadership. Uh, and I just got to pause for a minute and let me deliver myself. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. The Lord spoke to my heart. He said, son, when you get on Facebook, uh, son, when you get on social media, well, you've got everybody's ear. Uh, I want you to do like the old church used to do. I want you to take this opportunity uh, to make sure, amen, that if you have transgressed against anybody, uh, I'm just going to pause in my preaching right now. Uh, if I've transgressed against anyone, if I've done you wrong, uh, if I've not treated you as God would have me to treat you, uh, I humbly beg your forgiveness before the presence of God this morning. Because uh, brothers and sisters, after all, Uh, and the 
resistance. I'm getting ready to close, y'all, and I can hear somebody right now. You may be asking, you said, Pastor, you started out by talking about Noah, and you found yourself now talking about Amos. Well, Amos was talking to the church of the living God. And God said, deal with the storm 
earthen vessel. I'm getting ready to speak quiet. But if you don't have the Holy Ghost, the grace of God is here that you might receive the Holy Ghost. Lord, have mercy. The Bible declares, my God, if your earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more does our heavenly Father know how to give the Holy Ghost to them that ask? So if you don't have the Holy Ghost today, I want to admonish you today. Amen. Visit our website at EmmanuelNashville.com. Amen. And you can go on there in the comment section or in the prayer request section and make your request known. Not only unto God, but we're here to pray with you. And we believe that there's a great big God in heaven that's waiting to fill you with the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer. And as always, we pray. Lord, help us to have one mind. And let that mind be the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.